Hello everyone, Samantha from ProSymmetry here. So happy to have you on our version 9.2 release webinar today. Um, a few things before we get started. Hannah Fox um, from our support team is going to be delivering today's webinar. Uh, we're really excited for 9.2. Hannah will be covering a lot and honestly, probably a few things we cannot cover today because as we keep saying, this is our largest version release yet and this one sure is. Um, so a few things before we get started here. First and foremost, both the release notes and the um, PowerPoint that Hannah is showing today is available in the, it might be called materials for you, it might be called attachments. I'm not 100% sure what that looks like for you specifically, just depending on how you joined. Um, of course, these will be available in the Help Center as well. And there will be a recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel, also in the Help Center. You will also be sent a recording too. So don't worry, we have you covered there. Uh, with that said, um, if you would like to schedule your upgrade to 9.2, please, please, please reach out to your customer success manager. Uh, they will be able to get that scheduled. Um, if you are in implementation right now, you can reach out to your implementation consultant. Don't worry, we will get you upgraded. Uh, with that said, Hannah, I think that was all the housekeeping items. If you want to go to the next slide, maybe just make sure. Yep, as always, no cost to upgrade. We would love to get you these new features. And then the next one, maybe. Perfect. I think that was everything. So Hannah, with that said, I am going to let you take it away. Great. Thank you, Sam. All right. So I'm just going to do a demo of the new features that we have in Tempest. You're, you're, feel free to follow along if you'd like with the slideshow, but I'm just going to go straight into the environment um, and show you um, what we have. So. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk today, talk about um, is that we continue to make improvements to make um, Tempest more accessible um, and more compliant for accessibility. So this is around tool tips. Um, you may see more confirmation messages. And then we also have keyboard support now um, and more screens. So the first major feature that we have is team resources. Uh, team resources is available through security and licensing. You will want to contact your customer success manager for more information on that. Um, so team resources allows users to create a team from existing resources within Tempest. So let's walk through how we can do this. So if I go into my resource management screen here, because I have the permissions, I now have this drop down here for create resource. So if I go ahead and click on this, you'll see this option now for team resource. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new team resource. So let's call this team. What you may notice is that you still have access to all of your attributes that you have set up within Tempest um, for your resource attributes. However, however, you may notice that this uh, user, this cannot be a user within Tempest. So you can't create an, an account for this user. So there's no login information, there's no global role, um, and there's no timesheet user abilities. However, the members of the team can still submit time to the team on their timesheets. All right. So something that's very unique about team resources is the default rate. So you can either enter in a manual rate per hour for the entire team. You can go to create an advanced rate for the entire team or something that's new for this um, type of resource is an auto calculated option. So when this, is, uh, when this is selected, what will happen is it'll take the default rates of all of the members on the team and calculate the rate based on that information. Ad additionally, this is time phased. So you can see you can search, view it by month, day, week, quarter, et cetera. So next, you'll want to go to the team capacity screen. And this is a little bit different than the capacity screen you may have seen for other resources, as you may notice. So the first thing you want to do is create a start date and an end date for the team. You can select this quick date filter here as well. So let's say I wanted this for the current year. You can go ahead and see now this updated um, the date range to January 2024 to December 2024. Additionally, you can change the duration or the granularity to from month to day to week, etc. However, you need to um, to see this information. So at the bottom, in the bottom grid, it's kind of like our build team infrastructure here, where you can see that we have the different resources below. 
And this is their net availability. And additionally, you can add a heat map if you'd like. The simple is the out of the box heat map and the configuration one is just the one you have created in general settings. Additionally, you can view this information with the allocation or demand data set, um, your planned or actuals, and then you can also choose which granularity you'd like to see this in. You can search for resources, filter, add columns, add groupings, and then uh, choose how you want to view this information. So hours, cost, FTE, FD percentage of mandates. So I'm just going to keep it in hours and let's just select a few resources here. So let's choose Donna Miller and this person and this person. So as you can see, as I select these different resources, they will show as grayed out down here and they will be populated up here, just like in the built-in functionality. And now what you may notice is that it says 100% for every single resource. This is um, telling you how much this resource is going to be spending on that team. So you can change this if you have the permission. So let's say that Donna Miller is only going to be available 100% for the first two months, then maybe she's going to go down to 50%. You can change that as you need to. So let's say maybe she's only needed 30% of the time in April, and then she's not available at all in May. In May. We also don't limit the amount of teams that the resources can be assigned to. So you can assign them to multiple teams during the same time if needed as well. Okay. The next option we have is story points here. This is new to Tempest and this will be available only for team resources. This is available in this screen. And then also if you, when you allocate team resources as well within the single project screen and the bulk project allocation flat grid screen. So from here, you will have to put in the story point numbers for each month. If you want to do it in the weekly level, you can do it at the weekly level, et cetera. So let's say um, it's going to be eight story points in January, 10 in February, and then back, and then five. Um, and as you see, as I keep putting in the different information here, there is also a computed cost per story point that comes up as well. So let's just continue on with this. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this here. Once I save the page, you'll notice that there's a new option here called cross project allocation, which is very similar to the one that we have for regular resources. If I go ahead and select on this, you won't see anything right now due to this resource not being assigned to any projects. But once they're assigned, you'll see them, the projects here um, that they are assigned to and the data associated to that. Additionally, you can filter here with the date range filter. You can view allocation or demand, and again, planned or actual. And again, both of these are exportable as well. Okay. Additionally, team resources do have the capability for people to view the attributes, the audit log. If there need to be files associated with the team, you can upload those. Additionally, sheets and skill matrix can be associated with team resources as well. So you do have those options. So now if I go back to my attributes page, now that I've signed resources, you'll see that there's now a calculated hourly rate that's been populated. So that, like I said, that is new for team resources and that can be very useful for you uh, to see that total hourly rate information. All right. Additionally, you can report on the amount, on the members assigned to the teams and within Pivot Grid, we also added that functionality as well. Uh, you can clone team resources so you can choose to clone them and you can choose to clear their attributes or their files. They don't have calendars or admin time assigned associated to them, so those will not be available for team resources. Additionally, we have a global replace option. You can choose the effective date as, as you would for a normal resource, but however, you will only be able to assign a different team to replace that information. So if I go back to um, the resource screen, we did add some other options here as well. So you can see now we have this quick filter with my resources. So when I select this, it'll show all of the, all of the resources where I am the resource manager. So if I go to resource managers here, you'll see that um, I am assigned as the administrator uh, for these resources here. Additionally, if you go to resources, this will only show those that are not team resources and then team resources will only filter out filter on the ones that are um, team resources. Okay. 
Another thing that we have added is a default rate indicator. So this new um, icon here shows you the if they have advanced rates, you can go ahead and hover over that and it will show you the advanced rates that are associated to these different resources. All right. Another thing that we've added on the screen is the ability to add up to 10 um, resource manager, managers instead of seven. So if I go ahead and select all here, only 10, the first 10 in this example will be selected. And you can see that you can't select any further after that. But if I go ahead and deselect one, for example, you can see I have the option to select more, one more. Within the net availability grid, we've added those uh, advanced rate indicators again here. Also, we added an option of view resources or team resources as a toggle. And then also we added the ability to export out columns and groupings into Excel when you export them out. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about kind of goes hand in hand with team resources. So if I go to admin settings and then go to planning intervals, this is a brand new um, tile. We do allow users to, to create new planning intervals. If you don't use planning intervals, this can also be used for roadmap milestones. So what you can do here is you can click create. You can type in the name of the planning interval that you want. So let's say planning interval six. I could then choose the date that, you, that this would be applicable. And then you can go ahead and select the color that you want it to be associated with this planning interval. So I'm going to hit create here. And now you'll see that this populated within the grid. Additionally, within the grid, you are able to edit the information. So you can edit the names if you need to. You can edit the dates and then also the colors um, of the different interval planning, planning intervals. And additionally, you can delete them as well if you have the permissions. So now that I have these all set up, I can go into my project management area and open up a project. And I can go ahead and turn on the planning intervals right here from options. So from, from here, you can see that now you have a planning intervals area here, and then you can see the different planning intervals that are associated with the dates of the project. So I can go ahead and hover over it and you can see the name and the date and the color. So this could be helpful if you're when you're planning um, either sprints or if you just need to be aware of when a milestone occurs within the project. All right, so now let's go ahead and allocate um, the, the team resource that I just created. So if I go ahead and click team here, You'll see that it now you can now allocate information to the team. So you can do it in hours, cost, FTE, FTE percentage, Gantt, mandates, and story points. Again, story points is new, and this actually can be hidden or shown within your environment based on general settings as active or default units. So as you may notice when I'm on story points, only the team resources assigned to this project will be able to have story points. All these individual resources will have grayed out data, so you can't actually enter any information here. Um, additionally, story points will be calculated automatically if you put in hours, FTE, uh, or, or cost, for example. So if I put in, let's say, 10 hours here, and then if I go to story points, you'll see now that it's automatically calculated based on how I set up this, this team resource within um, the, the team capacity information. Okay, so we also added some updates to um, the project management grid. So if I go back one screen, first you may notice that now there is um, colors. This has been added to selection type attributes. So if I go into admin settings and attribute management, and I go to my selection type um, attributes, you can go ahead and edit your existing ones or create a new one. And now you'll see this background color option here. You can go ahead and select the different colors that you need um, to be applied to these different values. This will show up within the project management grid, within the resource management grid, within your single project allocation grid or your bulk project allocation 
grid as well. And then also timesheets if you have assignment attributes that have this in there. Okay. All right, some other options that we added within project management is this quick filter. You can, you can select my projects now, which is wherever I am assigned as the logged in user as the project owner for those projects. Um, we did also change the orientation of this, as you can see. So you have my projects, you still have the regular projects, oh. workflow and uh, template projects that you can view still. All right, another thing that we added here is when you're shifting a project, we now have the option to shift the schedule start date as well, and not just the start date of the project. Okay. All right, so now if I go into the bulk project allocation flatgrid screen, we made some updates there as well. So. The first thing that we added, just like in the single project, you can now um, display the planning intervals. So if I go ahead and turn that on, you'll now see the planning intervals that we saw earlier. Again, this has to do with the date range as well of your view. So if my view only started in June, you would only see these, but you can, you can turn that on to view within the grid. Additionally, we added this resource type filter for individual resources and team resources. So if I go ahead and collect, select team resource, um, you'll now see only the teams are available for me to see. And then if I go ahead and select individual resource, now only the ones that are not team resources will be available in the grid. Another thing that we added was sorting on dates. So you can now click on January 24, for example. Turn this off and group real quick. If you click on this, it'll now sort the column so you can do that as well um, and then other updates we made is with the gantt chart here so you can click on gantt and if we have milestones for example if i move this to september you'll see that now you can see that milestone on the gantt chart as well and then additionally you can now put um, the project name on the gantt bar instead of the values that are the, the allocation values. So if I turn that on, you'll see Aurora phase 15 instead of it showing the, the allocation values that were there previously. All right. All right, the next thing I wanna cover is uh, updates that we made to project workflow. So if I go to admin settings here, I can go to my workflow management and we did make some updates to the actual workflows area. So if I click on this one, for example, we can take a look. So one thing that we added here is linear workflow. So what this means is that when the project workflow is in, let's say state one, you can only move to state two from state one. You can't jump around to other, other states that are not right after state one. So if I had three states, I can't go to, from state one to state three, I'd have to go to state one state two, and then state three. Additionally, we added this project template option. So when this is selected, you can go ahead and choose your template that you want to use. And then when you create a new workflow project that has this assigned, the template will be assigned to uh, that project. And then the last thing that we added here is also the default page. So you can now change the default page from the workflow screen to whatever area of the project that you'd like. So let's say if I added the second state and put the attributes here, I can go ahead and save that. Now, when it is on the second state, now it'll open to the attributes area instead of the workflow area. Okay, and then let's walk through some examples of how this works in practice. So if I go to project management, I'm gonna filter on my workflow projects here. So let's start with the nonlinear one. So if I click on nonlinear, I can see now that um, if I go to the second state, now we also added this mark as current state option. Previous, previously, if you went to the second state, it would just automatically be on that second state no matter what. But now you can click mark as current state and then it would be on that state. Um, another option that we added was that you can now edit security groups within your workflow projects before you weren't able to. And then additionally, if there are no allocations um, within the project, you can edit 
the start end dates here as well. Because this one has allocations assigned, I cannot edit this, but we'll go through an example where we can. So next, so if I click on review here, I can go ahead and click on Marcus current state. And then let's see. So if I go back to one, I can now go to three because this is not linear. So let's go to an example of a linear one. So if I go to my linear one, you can see there's an icon here that shows that's a linear uh, workflow. I can't, if I click on part three, you'll notice that there's no um, mark as current state. But if I go to part two, I can. So if I click on this here, now I can go to part three and mark it as a current state. So that's what the linear workflow is for. Um, and then additionally, as I mentioned previously, you can select the start and end dates. So if, because there are no allocations on this one, I can go ahead and select the dates that I want. And then if I go ahead and save this here, if I go into my allocation screen, you'll now see that these are now populated with those dates that I entered. So now because I'm on part two, so let me go back one screen. And if I reopen this one, now you will see that this is now on the attributes page because I set it to be set within the configuration page to open to the attributes page on the second state. Another thing that we updated with workflow projects is that we split um, access for uh, access to states and, and view access to the forms. So now if I if you have view access to the form, but you don't have access to the state, you can still view um, the form. So, for example, if I go here and this is a resource that only has view access to the forms, I can go into my project management area. Let's see if I can. Access it here. If I go to the workflow, you can see um, that I can still access this information. Let's see. I think it's this one. So I can't change the state here, but then if I go ahead and update it here, and mark as current state, I can go ahead and refresh my page. And then you can see I still have access to the form, but I can't do anything with this. I can't save it. And I can't move to state three because I don't have access to do so, but I can still view this part one. I also just can't move back to it. So that's another update that we made to workflows. All right. All right, so for the next area we're gonna talk about is multiple assignment. So if I go to my admin settings here and go to general settings, we added this option called allow multiple assignments. Um, you wanna be aware though, that you can't turn this off until you delete out the multiple assignments within Tempest. So if I have multiple assignments, I can click this as off and hit save. You will see a message, something like this, that shows you the projects and the resources and the tasks that are assigned as multiple assignments. So you will need to go through each project and remove um, each of the assignments before you can disable this, this setting. Okay, so let's walk through what multiple assignments are. So let's open up a project here. Let's just go to my regular projects. Let's go to allocations. All right, so what multiple assignments is for is it allows you to, to assign a resource to the same task multiple times, um, as many as you want. And additionally, you can assign different um, assignment attributes to those different assignments. So what you can do is you can check this out. And let's say I need this Nicholas James person here to have another assignment to the generic task. I can go ahead and select generic uh, multiple times. So even though he already has a generic assignment here, I can go ahead and select it again. It, it's not gonna for, forbid you to do that. And you can see now that it says new assignment number one, new assignment number two. And these are just placeholders um, until you actually create the assignment and save and check it in. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and put in a value here and I can go ahead and put these here. And I'm gonna go ahead and save and check this in. And the next thing you'll notice is when I expand this person again, you'll see now they have assignment ID numbers associated with those assignments. So another thing that we added is this ID um, option here. So you can insert an assignment ID 
into the grid if you want. Um, and here it'll denote which assignment he's assigned, which assignment ID number he's assigned to. This is pretty useful for timesheets as well because you can assign, if they're a timesheet user, they can assign time to different assignments that they've been assigned to multiple times. Um, and then also additionally for Excel imports for assignment imports. If you, within the assignment import, we did add an assignment ID column in there. So if you wanted to let the system know which assignment you wanted to update, you can put the assignment ID number in there. Otherwise, it would just create a brand new assignment with a new ID. So this is also the case in the bulk project allocation flat grid screen. So if I go back to ours, I can insert this assignment ID column, which is helpful to see which assignment number is assigned, he's assigned to. All right, so the next thing that I wanted us to discuss is view management. So we made some updates um, to view management here. So if I go to view management, I wanna go to the BPA flat grid area. So the first thing that we added here was this uh, date quick picker here. So you can choose current quarter, current year. So we have this already in the BPA flat grid area, but now it is in view management. So if you want to say current year, you can do so, for example. The next thing that we added, which is very exciting, is that you can now choose the different modes that you want um, and then select the different resources or projects. So new assignment in our system is a default mode, but if it's called default in your system, this would be the default mode. Resource would be the resource mode where you can select resources or filter on a department or a team or whatever you need to filter on and select the different resources assigned to those. And then also the project mode where you can go ahead and select the projects or filter on different project attributes as well. So I made one here called production view, and this is filtered on the production um, department, for example, and I went ahead and selected all my resources. From there, you can also share this with other people within that department if you need to. Um, and then another op thing that we added here is also a search capability for the different attributes. So let's go ahead and show you how this works within the bulk project allocation flat grid screen. So if I go back to my bulk project screen here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on production view. So now you'll see that those resources that I had selected are automatically selected here and the filter is assigned to that production as I put in the view. So anytime the, the resource comes back or the user comes back to this view, for example, it will always have this filter assigned to it. And even if they change something, so if I remove some of the people here, and then if I go back and come back in, it will it will show you that um, it's still it's still applied to everybody. Okay. All right. Some other updates that we made within view management is in the project and the resource management side. So if I go to project management you'll see now we have this quick filter here so you can now filter on my projects the regular projects workflow projects or template projects and additionally we added this search capability here and then very similar we did this in resource management as well we did my resources the resources and team resources and then additionally a search so how this search would work so if you want to put demand planning for example you can go ahead and search for that and it'll show you this here and you can go ahead and select it and now it'll be automatically selected within your view. All right. All right. Another capability that we have added is in data sync. So we did add a new import type and that is import advanced rates. We've known that some of our users have been looking for this. So what this will do is it will allow you to import the advanced rates in bulk for multiple resources at once. So you can go ahead and click on the rate template. And then from here, you can fill out this template as needed. So let's show you what it will look like. Okay, so if you download the template, you'll see that you can, it has these, these four columns, resource name, rate, start date, and end date. So from here, you'll wanna put in the resource names that need to have advanced rates associated to them. Then you can put in the rate information that you need, and then also the start and end date of when that rate should be in effect. 
So that is how this one will work. And then once you have filled that out, you can just go ahead and import that um, as normal. All right. Another thing that we've added here is within the submit feedback area, we have a what's a new area. And this will show you the highlights and the information that's been added into the newest release. Um, if you want more information than just these, we have detailed release notes in the Help Center that you'll be able to um, access from clicking on and more. But this will highlight um, what, what is the most newest features in the newest release. Okay, so the next area that I want to talk about is my sheets, which is brand new. So similar to my skills, we've added this my sheets area underneath the, the resources or the user's name here. So let me walk through how to configure that information. So first of all, my sheets is access driven. So it's within role management. There is a permission for people to have access to this. Additionally, you will need to go to sheet templates. If you're an administrator, for example, go to your resource sheet templates. And then from here, you can go ahead and decide which ones should show in my sheets and which ones should not. So any ones that are highlighted orange are showing, any that are gray are not showing. So if I click on this, you'll see it now it's, now this one will also show within my sheets. Um, so, but right now only experience details. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So if I click on my sheets, this will be only the sheet templates that are associated to my sheets. This, you will not be seeing like just normal sheets here. These are only sheet templates that are resource related. So this could be pretty useful if you have certifications you need people to fill out information about, um, training information, or really anything you want your own users to be filling out information on. Um, so if I went ahead and checked this sheet out, you can go ahead and update the information that the, temp the template has. So like education, for example, what did they have, years of experience, experience details, and then when you completed it. And then also, um, yeah, so you, it, it's really up to you know the administrator on what information needs to be filled out here, but this is available for the end users to come in and just fill out their own sheets if needed. All right, so let's go into some settings that we've added. So within general settings, we did add the option for Dutch as a language. Additionally, that is available under your profile as well. So if you, language, if you wanted to set your own language as Dutch, you can do that now as well. Additionally, under miscellaneous, we have added the option to um, add a login page link alias and a login pa page link URL. So let me show you what this will look like. So let me log out here. So what this will do is it will create an alias here on the login page. You can call it whatever you need to, if, but we added this mostly if you need a privacy policy or like some sort of regulatory updates that you need to include within Tempest. Um, so you can go ahead and create the link alias here, and then you can choose your link URL. So now if I click on this here, you'll see that open to that URL that I provided um, within that field. So this is pretty handy for organizations that need a link to their privacy policy or some other sort of regulatory information that their users need access to. All right, the, another option that we have is hide financial cost currency. So what this will do is it'll hide whatever the currency um, symbol is within financials. So if I go into a project, for example, and I go into financials, I, you'll see now that there's no currency symbol. So if this were off, you'd see a dollar sign because this environment is set up with the US dollars. But because that's turned on, you won't see any uh, currency symbol in this in this view. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is roadmap. We made some updates here as well. So within a roadmap, um, we did add the option to group by resource type attributes and text and string type attributes. So before it was only selection type, but now if you go ahead and open this up, you'll see there's strings, there's texts, uh, there's resources here as well. 
So um, you can now group by that information as well. Additionally, we did add this quick date picker here as well for projects. So if I wanted to see projects for next year, you can easily select that information as well. So now if I go ahead and, um, and open up this roadmap, for example, let's see. So if I wanted to do resource, so if I do project owner, for example, I can update this. And if I go ahead and open up my roadmap, you'll now see that there are different um, people here based on what I've selected. Okay. So another thing that we've made an update to is the skill matrix report. So I'm going to go here. So in skill matrix here, um, we now have this option to include inactive resources. When this is enabled, you will now see anyone that is not enabled as italicized. By default, this will be turned off and they will be hidden, um, but you can turn that on to view that information. Additionally, within this report, we've added the skills. So if they have skills assigned to, or we've added hints, sorry, to the skills. So if you added a hint to any of your skills, you will now be able to hover over that hint here and then see that information. Additionally, if you export this out, it'll also show you that hint. So if I go ahead and export this to Excel, you'll now see that there's the hint here as well within the export. All right. So the next thing I wanna cover is what if. So if I go into my Tempest model here, so the first thing you may notice on the screen that's new is this little icon. So if I go ahead and hover over this, it says has financials. Um, this denotes whether or not financials is configured within the model. This is this is helpful because sometimes you may not know if you know you have financials configured or not in the model. So this will just help you see that as an indication. Another thing that we've added here that one of some of our clients have been looking for is we've added 15 years and 20 years to the time frame of the model. Um, so as you can see, 15 years would go out to 2039 based on my start date, and then 20 years would go out to 2044 as well. So you can select these different options from here as well. We have removed the uh, dependency option, and now all dependencies will be shown by default within the model as well. So if I go ahead and open this model, um, we have added some cool features in here. For example, we've added the options to link projects together. So you can either drag and drop this here to these endpoints, and now you'll see that they've been, um, they have been linked together. Additionally, you can do the same thing by clicking on these options here and clicking on link projects. And then you can go ahead and select the project you'd wanna link and hit okay, and you can see that those are now linked together. All right. Additionally, um, we have now added an option in financials to view the delta. So this will show you the before and after, kind of similar to the grid delta mode um, under Gantt. But basically so what you can do is you can go to delta mode, you can go to before and after, so you can go ahead and move any of these um, Gantt bars here, and you'll see that they have been updated here. So, so and then additionally, we have year mode here that you can use. Um, so you can see like before and after um, information as needed. In budget, we've also made some updates here. So you can now use quarter or year mode. And then additionally, we've added this impact assessment grid in here. So let's see if I can. So if I go ahead and click on one of these here, you'll see now that you can see the project name, the plan cost, the labor cost, plan utilization, and labor utilization just by clicking into these cells. Okay. All right, so, so I think that's really it for what if, um, but we did add some other options as well in Insight Plus that I just wanna quickly mention. Um, we added the advanced rates and within Insight Plus in 9.2, and then we've also added the file data for projects and resources as well into Insight Plus. And then additionally, in the API, we've added some updates as well, including um, changes around team resource and advanced rates. Um, 
So I think that really concludes it for the demo today. I'll pass it back over to Sam. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hannah, for covering uh, what's new in version 9.2. So with that said, I know that was pretty quick and I know I'm hoping at least that there are going to be a lot of questions about this new functionality that we are delivering, the updates that we're making. So if you have questions, please reach out to your customer success manager or your implementation consultant. We would be so happy to, uh, to answer those questions for you. Like I said, release notes are available to download here. They will also be available in the Tempest Help Center. You can also download the PowerPoint presentation that Hannah referenced in the beginning as well here, likely also in the Help Center. A recording of this webinar will be available likely tomorrow on our YouTube, but again, we will send that out to you as well. So thank you so much for joining today. Um, if you have any feedback, you have any questions, we would love to hear it. So reach out to your CSM and uh, yeah, hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much, Hannah. Talk to you all later.